we move to okay that? we're ready to go so i'll record yeah oh i've got it recording already melvin okay great yeah. okay well good morning everybody welcome to our service this morning sorry for the slight hold up but that's because <clears throat> I've got my learner plates on this morning, uh, learning how to uh, host Zoom, but it went slightly wrong. So um, uh, anyway, we're up and running. Um, I've just got some uh, church news to share with you before we <clears throat> get into uh, the rest of the service. So uh, prayer together, uh, as you know, it's incredibly important that we regularly pray um pray together so prayer together we're doing on zoom at 11 o'clock and 7 15 on tuesday uh the zoom link you should have had by email if you haven't do uh, let me know and i can send it to you um then we've got our usual reflection and prayer on wednesday at seven o'clock churches together have got an event this saturday a virtual coffee morning on zoom uh, the guest speaker is James Bellamy, who's a trustee of the Daylight Centre. Uh, that's on Saturday, 20th June at 10 a.m. Please contact Alan Palmer for the link to it so you can join it. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, a bit of disappointing news. Uh, our church weekend has had to be cancelled. This is not at all a surprise, of course. Um, uh, but it, it's now uh, we know that we definitely can't go on with it. Uh, because of the coronavirus restrictions. Um, everyone who has booked in has been emailed. Uh, if you have booked in and you haven't heard, do come back to me, okay? But you should have received an email yesterday. Okay, uh, well, that's it for our church news. I'm going to hand over now to Jeremy, who's going to lead the service for us this morning. Thanks, Jeremy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you for a wave. <laughs> Um, so our service this morning, our, um, our subject, we're continuing the topic and subject of the Sermon on the Mount, um, and our subject this morning is marriage, divorce and faithfulness. And of course, a good part of uh, any relationship um, is appreciation, uh, whether that's uh, with our partners, with friends and also with God. So I wanted to start this morning by just beginning with thinking about what has God done for us in our lives, um, either recently uh, or maybe in the longer term, in small ways or in large ways. Um, and just to have a think about that. When we uh, say the Lord's Prayer, we start with our Father, hallowed be thy name. And we start by uh, lifting our eyes to God. And that has some, some interesting effects. I am. Um, I do a little bit of running and when I run, I find that I run faster when I look further ahead than when I concentrate on the ground that's in front of me. And I think there's something about when we're in the middle of something very difficult and that's all we're focusing on, actually it's very difficult to feel positive. Whereas we're, if we, one of the challenges of the Lord's Prayer is to look up to God and acknowledge how great he is. Um, and Melvin used it the other, uh, said it the other day, Lauren Daigle has a song, uh, called trust in you which reflects those sentiments about no matter what's going on lord i will trust in you so if you have anything that that you'd like to share um that has happened either this week or a little bit further away but in ways that you'd like to say thank you to god then then i'll invite you just to um unmute yourselves for a, a minute or so and, and let us know um and uh, if not we'll just have a little bit of a moment of quiet to reflect on that uh, and then I shall open with a prayer. Uh, so if anyone's got anything they'd like to share. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I've had a wonderful um, experience this week um, through something that I'm going to be doing that's in the pipeline. I contacted um, a client that I know called Tina. And she said, I'm so glad that you've called. She said, my daughter is really searching for God. And I am a Christian, but not a practicing one. But I want to know more. And we want to know more and learn more. So they are Tina. And the little girl is Paisley. And they have taken some books. And I've le led them to some uh, YouTube things and stuff like that. So if we could pray for, well, just thank you, Lord, 
for his perfect timing. Um, and I just want to obviously encourage everybody if they remember Tina uh, and Paisley, and there are other children as well, um, in particular, um, because yeah, they're embarking on their journey seeking the Lord. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mel. Thank you. It's really encouraging. And we'll... I, I, I've really been encouraged by, by Mel this week doing um, a, a video of herself out in nature. And I just found that really, really beautiful and encouraging and uplifting. And sometimes it's, um, and like Rob was saying earlier, it's, there's nature all around us that we haven't noticed before. And yet when we go out and spend time looking in detail, there's so much to be thankful for and so much beauty. And, and I, just, I just want to say thank you for, for reminding me of that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And this is Bisola calling from Port Harcourt. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And um, Bumi is here with me. Um, yeah. So today is my birthday. Happy oh, birthday. And old uh, today. That's it. Thank you, Bisola. Thank you. So. Um, thank you for all of those and uh, it's really good isn't it just to start by remembering it's very easy to get stuck in the weeds but actually God is good um, all the time and all the time God is good so let's just uh, we'll begin with a prayer oh father God we thank you that you are such a gracious and wonderful amazing all-powerful God immortal invisible God only wise Lord you are the creator of all things, Lord, you are outside of time and space. You exist before the world began and after it ends. You are amazing. You are indescribable. You are undeniable. And we thank you and praise you, Lord, that you have all the answers for us. We just need to uh, ask and turn to you, Lord. And in the midst of whatever we're going through, Lord, we just need to raise our eyes and say, yes, Lord, whatever it is, even if you don't move the mountains we want you to move, Lord, we will trust in you. Uh, we will put you first and we will acknowledge you before everything else because you are our Lord and our Saviour, King of creation and our Abba Father. We thank you, Lord, uh, for Tina and Paisley and we thank you for uh, Mel reaching out to them and that it was just a beautiful alignment, Lord, of those two things. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Mel and her video that's encouraged Sarah and we thank you for Bisola and her birthday and just for all your blessings Lord in our lives and we bring these together Lord and just say thank you praise you and this morning Lord we come to put you first in the midst of everything that's going on you are God and you are first and you are first in our lives we pray these things in Jesus name Amen and I shall hand over to uh, Rob and Maria now to lead us in uh, the first part of our worship. Thank you, Rob. Well, we have uh, much to thank God for, way beyond the few things that we've just talked about. And the first song in, that we're going to sing of two encourages us to, as people of the risen King who delight to bring him praise, come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace please feel free to stand up and sing this one if you feel able it's it's definitely a full chested song okay Oh, 
Now, the next one we're going to sing is Great are you, Lord, mighty in strength. Now, the chorus goes, Raise your hands, all your nations, shout to God all creation. How awesome is the Lord Most High. Now, I don't want you to do anything that God isn't calling you to do, but it would be lovely to see all your hands raised at the point we sing, Raise your hands, all you nations. Mine will remain on the guitar, but Maria will show you exactly how to do it. Great are you, Lord. in this peculiar way we have spoken of some of the tiny things the tiny ways in which you bless us and this morning as peculiar as this may be we want to recognize your awesomeness and your power and your beauty and your majesty you are magnificent and only you are worthy of our praise Lord listen to these words listen to these actions with our bodies Listen to, uh, see our, our, our commitment to gather together. Mm. And we pray that you would be touched and that you would appreciate it. That it would mean so much to you that your face would beam and smile as we, your people, gather in your name. Mm. May our offerings come from honest hearts that desire to love and to serve and to follow you. Where you are glorified and us in our weakness just almost disappear, Lord where people only see you in us. Mm -hmm. Great are you, Lord, mighty in strength. Amen. Please sit down. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, so I'm gonna ask Alan now uh, to read our reading, uh, which is from Matthew 5, 
verses 31 to 37. Alan. Thank you. Yeah, Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 31. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress. And anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. And we say together, thanks be to God. Thank you, Alan. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Rob, who's going to bring our message. And just before uh, I do that, we'll say a quick prayer for him. <coughs> Lord Father God, we thank you for this time together to gather. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word. And we pray now, Lord, that you would uh, be with Rob as he speaks to us. And we pray that you would speak through him to us and that the power of your Holy Spirit would uh, speak deep into our hearts, that we would receive from you what you uh, have to offer us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. Thank you, Mick. As Jeremy mentioned at the beginning of the service, um, today we're continuing our walk through the Sermon on the Mount. And um, as Alan um, helpfully just read, we're focusing specifically on Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 to 37. The theme for today's talk is marriage, divorce and faithfulness. And uh, in these six verses, Jesus clarifies some important things in relation to uh, divorce specifically. And then talks about uh, the importance of saying what we mean and, and, and the context of oaths as they used to exist. Uh, before we look at these verses, it's important to remind ourselves of the comments Jesus made at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount regarding the law from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17. Um, I'll refer to this passage quite a few times throughout, so if you've got the chance to get your Bible open at um, Matthew 5 before we start, that would probably be quite helpful. So this is what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17. This is just after, his, after the Beatitudes. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And so Jesus is therefore saying from the outset of this monumental sermon that his presence, his instruction and his ministry are not some radical new replacement for the law, but that he has in fact come to fulfill the law, to complete it. The reason it's important to get to grips with that truth at this particular point and around these short verses is that we see one or two significant buts and agains. I know how Alan likes to look out for these specific junctions and I've, I've struggled to avoid them myself now, but um, these two, two or three buts and agains where Jesus alludes to the law as his listeners had heard it and, and were probably interpreting it and then gives clarifications and explanations of what is actually required. As I thought about this point, it reminded me um, loosely of the whole Dominic Cummings debacle uh, of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there was much in there to evoke emotion, uh, disappointment, and even disgust. Um, but at the heart of the discussion was the issue of the law versus the spirit of the law. Uh, we could very easily go into breakout groups and discuss the virtues of, of that specific situation, um, but we are about God and not about Dominic Cummings. 
In verse 31, uh, Jesus uses the phrase, it was also said. So verse 31, 531. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. Here he is referring to the divorce laws as written in <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 to 4. A certificate of divorce was important as it meant that the wife could leave the marriage without shame and be free to remarry if she wished. Um, apart from the shame aspect of this, it also had a financial and practical implication for the woman remarrying as she would acquire, potentially acquire a second dowry, a sort of marriage gift, which was uh, important financially. The very existence of such laws at that time suggests that the practice of divorce was reasonably common and God uses, uh, used Moses to implement these divorce laws, not only to offer uh, protection to women, but primarily as a means of upholding the sanctity of marriage by ensuring that divorce was handled appropriately. So whilst respecting those laws, Jesus comes in with his first but in verse 32. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The reason for Jesus but at this junction in the text is not to undermine the law, as I explained earlier. But Jesus fully understands the situation that his listeners are sitting and living in. They got into the way of living by the words of the law rather than by the spirit of the law, undoubtedly looking for loopholes and undertaking daft practices as a means of complying with the letter of the law. They're driving to Barnard Castle to test their eyes rather than simply visiting the optician. In this statement, Jesus is affirming his position that the process of easy divorce is not part of God's plan. The exit from a marriage should not be as easy as buying a new car or dyeing one's hair or changing channels on the TV. And we could reasonably ask the question, why is God bothered? Can't we get it wrong in marriage, like in every other area of our lives, and just ask for forgiveness? We can absolutely ask for forgiveness and be forgiven. And I don't believe that in these words, Jesus is advocating that anyone sustain and endure a violent relationship with a husband or wife or any other number of perfectly reasonable reasons for divorce. But we need to understand that God knows that when we listen to him, engage with his instructions and take time to find the right person to marry and spend our lives with, we will then be happier and more effective and more efficient in his service. I don't know how easily you remember that almost overwhelmingly intoxicating feeling as a teenager when you're made aware that somebody fancies you. You might not be a teenager, but um, anyway, nevertheless. If it's somebody that you too are interested in, then there are fewer more exciting things or more encompassing things in life at that particular point. You start a relationship and that person is perfection embodied. The time you are apart with them, uh, you, the time that you're with them is never enough and the time that you are apart feels like time wasted or like life unlived. Relationships, be they with each other or with God, are intended to be powerful things. A supportive, loving, faithful, healthy relationship enables and equips us to be the best that we can be. Whilst a bad relationship has the, in, has the occasional incredible short-lived highs, coupled with more frequent devastating lows. All these feelings and emotions are not just there by chance, they are a result of the people that God has made us to be. They're intentional. If we therefore acknowledge this truth and recognize that God makes us in such a way that we are made to interact and meet that person that we're intended to marry, to be effective and efficient with, can we have no real surprise that divorce, and specifically divorce on a whim, a kind of tick box splitting, 
goes against all his plans and intentions. One verse which so often drags me back to a healthy place with God and enables me to challenge and test my own decisions comes from Romans 12 verse 2 and it's very well known. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In issues like divorce and marriage and faithfulness, it's so easy to allow ourselves to take comfort in the actions of the world as a means of affirming our own stance. If it was okay for Charles, future King of England, and it was okay for Brad and Angelina, and we see it happening on EastEnders, then it can't be wrong. Whilst our God is a forgiving God, we should not take liberties, but remember that we are called to live as a people of integrity and honesty. We must therefore test our motives and our intentions and do all that we're able with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit to feed and grow healthy, strong and loving relationships with Christ at the centre. As Jesus says in, in John uh, 15 verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The branches are an extension of the vine. It, like Jesus, is central uh, in our lives, critical in our uh, development, and critical in the, the progression of the branches, critical in, in us doing and being and changing anything. If you hear uh, nothing or remember nothing more of what I've said this morning, please remember this, Christ at the center. Christ at the center, Christ at the center. It's hard to emphasize sufficiently strongly how the Christ-centered life, where our relationship with Christ is our most significant relationship, where we do the things which help us grow and thrive in him, will ensure that the other relationships around that and the decisions we take will be more effective. Please don't hear me as, as saying that this is easy, and nor that it won't be challenging, nor that I am someone who has got all these things aced myself. But with Christ at the center, everything is better balanced and we take different difficult steps and decisions with confidence that God is with us. Many of the <clears throat> worship team are probably bored during my pre-service prayers, when I ask Jesus to come and take the central place in our services. In those prayers, I often uh, am taken to the uh, image of a maypole. All the pretty ribbons and laughter and fun and games can only happen as people move and rotate and pivot around the central pole. The order and organization and structure of that fun is directly as a result of this one critical component, the pole. Do we see God as being so critical in our own lives? Do we see the need to have Christ at the center as our reference and our tension point? Do we see that without him, like the removal of the maypole, that chaos will ensue? In the second part of the reading, starting at verse 33, <coughs> Jesus again points the listeners to the laws regarding the giving of false testimony. He uses the phrase, again, you have heard. And he's refer Jesus is referring to the laws as set down in Numbers 30, uh, verse 2. If a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to that which proceeds out of his mouth. Well, in, back in Matthew 5, verses 33 to 37, Jesus again doesn't undermine the law, but instead goes beyond it. He completes it, fulfills it. However, Jesus' instructions are way more radical, and he actually, where 
the, the, this law as it in numbers defines specifics, Jesus just simply said, um, don't do oaths of any form on anything godly. So you, you can't make an oath on heaven, earthly, so on, on the earth or on Jerusalem or humanity, where he talks about colours of hairs on heads. But instead he challenges them to be people whose yes means yes and their no means no. As a principle, this sounds like the most simple and straightforward way of acting and speaking. And how marvellous it would be for all of us if that weren't the case nowadays. However, uh, in trying to convince others of our sincerity, we can't wait to swear on our babies or swear on our mother's lives. Another phrase uh, which um, I often hear my sons using and hear a lot on the telly, which underlines the rather sad state of affairs that we're currently in, is when you hear somebody open their sentence with the phrase, I'm not going to lie before they presumably tell the truth. How have we got to a position where it might be suggested that to lie would be our default position? At the root of both Jesus' instructions on divorce and the need to say and do what we mean, both speak to the need for all of us as children of God to have integrity in our relationship with God first and foremost and also in our relationships with others. I hope that for you, like me, this time um, in lockdown has given you cause to value and thank God for the relationships that you have. Whether they be with the um, good morning and good evening uh, that you say to the receptionist when you arrive at your office, or with your children, who you're now probably spending a good deal more time with, if they're, particularly if they're young, or with those who live on your road, close or crescent. For me, as somebody who happily operates in isolation, I never thought that I would be so pleased to see the friendly face of a neighbour I barely know on a Thursday night whilst clapping the NHS. I hope that this period of isolation has been one of appreciating the basic blessings of interaction and warmth, and of also <laughs> living during times where we're not fearful. The challenge for all of us today is to look into our own hearts and determine, with God's help, whether those things that we are doing, those places that we are going, and the relationships that we are forming are healthy and productive, purposeful and beneficial. Are we people who look for loopholes to validate the things we do, or are we feeding our understanding of how to live our lives through God's word and by depending on his Holy Spirit? As we transition towards what is now being referred to the new normal, I pray that we as people of God will have the strength, courage and boldness to live our lives in a way that pleases Jesus, is obedient and honouring to his calls and direction and where we are engaged with the world and aware of how it functions, but focused on not conforming to it of doing God's work in his way through lives of integrity with Christ at the centre. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Rob. So we're going to come now to uh, our time of prayers. Uh, and this is prayers of intercession. And... Um, just using the kind of the thread of the theme of the Lord's Prayer. We started with hallowed be your name. And then the next part of the Lord's Prayer is uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is a part where we we've acknowledged God first. We've said we've acknowledged God's greatness. We've acknowledged that he has power to do all things and anything. And we are calling God into uh, the situations that we see around us um, uh, and particularly in the world. And what we're really asking for is that is for God to establish his kingdom, his ways of working, his righteousness um, in the world as it exists and, and as it operates. And, and the, 
the reason I suspect we look up and we praise first is because when we start to look in the world, we can see so many things that, that aren't working. And particularly at this time, it's a, a very challenging time. And I think, you know, the world is always like that, but there's so much going on that's so out of the ordinary um, that it, it can feel particularly challenging for us. So I'd like us to think about if we were uh, stood in front of God now, if he was right in front of us and we were stood facing God, what would be the one thing that we would ask God, God's help for? What would be for us individually as we look out at the world, what would be the most important thing? And I'll invite you uh, perhaps unmute um, in a minute and, and share, but you know, just to pick up on some of the themes that are going on, obviously the, the ongoing um, challenge around coronavirus, and that's, that's in our country um, and also in lots of other parts of the world. So um, in Brazil in particular, uh, it's having a, a, an enormous impact. Um, on the population there and disproportionately those who are poor. So whether it be um, the native tribes in the Amazon uh, that it's having a huge impact on or whether it be those people in the favelas, you know, two million people I think in San, Sao Paulo live in shanty towns and they are cheek by jowl. They don't have the room, you know, social distancing, it must be <laughs> incredibly challenging and therefore this is going to have a huge impact on those communities. Whether it be thinking about things like uh, Black Lives Matter and the protests that have been um, have started after the death of George Floyd in the US. Um, we saw a while back, about two or three years ago, Reggie Yates did a really, really good program on the BBC looking at how, in some ways, America's police setup is so institutionally biased against people who are predominantly poor and that usually means black um that, that it's almost difficult for the police not to act in a fair way and that will change from state by state but but there is something fundamentally structurally um wrong there and that's not to say that we get it all right here either in the uk you know there is clearly um again an institutional bias in places if you look at the stats around stop and search predominantly black hues are stopped, although the discovery rates are not that much different. Um, and whether it be politics, you know, my, the phrase that came into my mind this morning was, we seem to want, as a population, we seem to want personalities now, rather than what, what I might call a serious politician. Um, it's personality politics, it has been for a while, but even more so. So what is there, if God was stood in front of us, what would we ask, what one thing would we ask of him? to come and help in our world. And I think the, the other component of that is, God always answers, he doesn't always say yes. And he doesn't always um, give us what we want, but he does know what we need. And again, one of the things, the verse that came to mind was, um, what father when asked by a child for a fish gives them a snake? Um, and sometimes it's very difficult to interpret what's a fish and what's a snake. Um, but God knows what we need, as Rob was talking about, in terms of those personal relationships we have, God knows what we need, even if he's not gonna give us what we want. So if you feel called to, what, what things would you ask God? What would be our individual prayer? Um, and then we'll broaden it out a little bit further after that. So just a couple of minutes, um, what would people bring forward to God and say, Lord, frankly, we need your help. wisdom and discernment to encourage the next generation of the church. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Opportunities to uh, witness to friends, neighbours and families when we've been there and done that already. Thank you, Chris. Thank you being able to really totally understand that he has made everybody 
whichever color, whichever culture, whichever background, he has taken the time and loved making each one of us. Thank you, Marie. Yes, very powerful. I just want to add to what Maria said by saying accepting diversity um, in the world, accepting one, one another. Thank you. Just picking up from what um, Rob said, um, for us, um, daily and going forward, Christ at the center, um, faithfulness and integrity. Thank you. Robin. For wisdom for our government, constantly criticized, sometimes justly, but for wisdom uh, from God to be given to those who lead us, that they may take good decisions. Thank you, Bob. For me to, um, to do God's will in every situation, because so often I feel like the Apostle Paul when he said, the good that I want to do, I don't do and the things I don't want to do that I find myself doing. So the ability to, to be able to do God's will in every circumstance. Thank you, Alan. thank you. Uh, and then the next bit would be, so if we're continuing our theme of, of the Lord's Prayer, um, the next bit then is, uh, give us this day our daily bread so um i'll leave a time of silence for this but it, it, again if there are anyone if there are people close to us that we want to pray for any personal needs uh then again feel free uh to ask for those um that that part really is having acknowledged god and looked out at the world is then putting ourselves then to say lord this is what we we need for us um and being willing to accept the answer in whatever form it comes. And it doesn't always come in the way we expect. I find that sometimes when I ask God for something, he doesn't change the situation. What he does is he changes my understanding of the situation. He changes my perspective so I can see it differently. Um, sometimes God's answer is silence. And that may be because he's already given us the answer. We just haven't chosen to accept it. Um, so it may be he's silent because he's saying, well, I've already given you this answer, you just need to follow. So if there's anything either for people close to us or, or personal needs, I'd invite you to uh, raise those now um, and then we'll have a, a short time of silence and then I'll, I'll wrap us up in prayer. Pray, Lord, for my family, for Ryan and Sammy and Leighton, that their eyes would be open to see you and to see your will for their lives, that you would appear to them, you would speak to them, and that they would come to know you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Alan. So we'll pray together now and uh, we'll, we'll wrap all of those prayers up and just provide a little bit of space for us each to bring our own prayers. Oh, Father God, we thank you that you are a powerful God. We know, Lord, that we do not understand everything that's going on. We know, Lord, that it is difficult for us to comprehend. But as Maria said, Lord, you have created every single person on the earth you knew each and every single one of us before we were born before we were formed in our mother's womb and no matter how difficult or challenging the circumstance no matter how much we think our circumstances count against this lord nothing counts against us if we are rooted in you and when we acknowledge you then we find our purpose and our place 
And that, that's for every single one of us, no matter what our background, what our race, uh, what our colour, what our culture. And we do pray, Lord, for wisdom. We pray for discernment. We pray for uh, respect of diversity. We pray, Lord, that this be a world where we seek out diversity, where we look for it, because every time we do that, we get such a much broader uh, approach, because that's reflecting you, Lord. When we incorporate and in, when we are inclusive and diverse, and when we champion equality, then we have a much better view of you and who you are, because we are seeing you through all those different viewpoints, through all those different people and their experiences, things we don't know. It's very easy Lord, for us to sit where we are and think we know what it's like for somebody else, but unless they actually tell us and we listen, Lord, then we don't truly know. And we pray, Lord, for that diversity. We do pray, Lord, for wisdom for our leaders, um, the politicians here and abroad. We pray, Lord, that you would be at the heart, as Rob said, at the centre of their government, of us and the decisions they have to make. We pray for our young people as they come through and the leadership of the church as it emerges, uh, for everyone's role in uh, bringing about your kingdom on this earth. And Lord, we pray for ourselves and we pray for those close to us. We think of those who are uh, suffering, whether they be mourning, uh, who have injuries or illness, and we bring them before you, Lord, and we ask for your power to be present in their lives and ours. And we bring our needs, Lord, before you in a, in a moment of silence. We know, Lord, that you don't necessarily give us what we want, but you always know what we need. And when we're ready to receive, then you will provide. Lord, we bring all these prayers together by saying the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to hand over uh, now to Rob, and I think the, uh, the song we're about to sing, Rob, I think kind of brings that together uh, really nicely. It's all I have. And all I am is yours. It's a more reflective song and a chance to just to settle in God's peace. Let's rest in God's peace uh, as we sing uh, this next song uh, that puts us in context of who God is. Rob. <laughs> doesn't come from you. I lay aside my pride and worldly world. To serve you is the greatest thing that I could ever do. For unless you build this house, I am building it. Glory to your Lord. 
to desire what others have Instead of seeing all the gifts that you have given me So help me find the flame which you As we go out into this week, may we each and every day seek to put God first. As Robert said, seek to put Christ at the centre. To start there. To think about what's going on around us. And then to ask God for his help for ourselves. Jesus said, you do not have because you do not ask. By all things, in prayer and supplication, make it, let us make known our requests to God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his light to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to uh, now, as has become our tradition.